Hello and welcome to Easy Electronics. Today's class we are going to discuss about capacitors. Capacitors are two terminal electronic components which are used for storing electric charge in it. So capacitors store electric charge. Capacitors are generally formed by placing two metal conductors, two parallel plate metal conductors separated by a medium of insulator. This insulator can be anything which can be either mica, quartz, paper or air or ceramic or anything which doesn't conduct electricity. So that is a capacitor. So capacitor basically stores charge. So you can represent capacitor like this. Capacitor is two parallel metal plates separated by an insulator. So like I told, it can be anything which doesn't conduct electricity. This insulator can be anything which doesn't conduct electricity. And the equation for charge which is getting stored in the capacitor is equal to Q is a charge and Q is equal to C into V. Where C is the capacitance and V is the voltage in between these two parallel metal plates. So that Q is the charge and it is measured in coulombs. So Q is the charge and it is measured in coulomb. Now C is the capacitance. C is the capacitance. And it is measured in farad. So farad is the unit of capacitance. Then V is the voltage in between the metal plates or in the capacitor and it is measured in volts. So the units are Q has a unit of coulomb, C is measured in farad and V is measured in volts. So you can say 1 coulomb is equal to 1 farad into 1 volt. So, 1 farad equal to 1 coulomb per volt. So, this is the unit of capacitance. Now, let us see the general equation for a capacitor. So, now I am going to derive the general equation for a capacitor. So, for that I am considering two parallel plates separated by a distance d. So this is the capacitor and it is having a air as insulator. So there is no other materials placed in between the parallel plates. That is there is no dielectric placed in between the parallel plates. There is only free space or air is present in between the metal plates. So these metal plates are separated by a distance D. One metal plate is holding positive charge and other metal plate is holding negative charge. Now I am going to consider two, three variables here. So this capacitor will be storing electric charge in it. So there is an electric field present inside the metal plates or in between the metal plates there is an electric field present and it is represented using the variable E. Also the area of the parallel plate capacitor or this the area in between the parallel plates or metal plates is considered as A. Also, the potential difference or the voltage in between the metal plates is considered as V. So, these three terms I am going to consider. So, what is the equation for the electric field present in between the metal plates? So, you can write the electric field E equal to the potential difference by the distance that is E equal to V by D where V is the potential difference D is the distance of separation of the two metal plates. So consider this as equation number one. Also how can you write E electric field E? E can be written as E equal to sigma by epsilon zero where sigma is the surface charge density by 
epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space. We write E as sigma by epsilon 0 where sigma is the surface charge density. So due to this charge which is holded in between the metal plates, you have the electric field. So E can be written as sigma by epsilon 0. So take this as equation number 2. Again, epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space or air. Again, how can you write sigma? I told it is the surface charge density. So, it is a charge density. So, it can be written as charge, total charge by area, where A is the area of the metal plates. So, this is considered as the equation number 3. Also, you have your equation for charge, which is Q equal to C V. So take this as equation number four. Now you have to combine these th these four equations and you will get the equation for your capacitor. From your equation number four, that is Q is equal to C V. You can write, I'm going to write it here once again, Q is equal to C V. So that is the first, sorry, that is the fourth equation which I have written here. Now, what is Q from equation number 3? So, cross multiply, you will get Q equal to sigma into A. I am going to write it here. Sigma into A equal to C into V. So, this is your equation number 2. Now, from equation number 2, what is sigma? Sigma is equal to E into epsilon 0. Again, you have to cross multiply to get your sigma. That is E into epsilon 0 into A equal to C into V. Now, V is equal to, V is a potential difference. So, what is V? From equation number 1, you have V equal to E into D. So, substitute the value of V from equation number 1. So, you, you can write E epsilon 0 into A equal to C into E into D. Now, you can cancel this E and this E. Now, what will be the value for C? So, C equal to epsilon 0 A by this B will come here that is by T. So, this is the general equation for a capacitor which is having air as a insulator in between the metal plates. So, here C is a capacitance. Epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space. A is the area of the metal plates, area between the metal plates. D is the distance between the metal plates. So, you, so we have discussed the case for free space or air when it is placed in between the capacitor or the metal plates. So, what if you are going to insert an insulator that is any separate other dielectric in between the metal plates. So, I am going to place a dielectric in between the metal plates. So, what will be the change of equation? So, if you are going to place a dielectric, then multiply the equation for capacitance with the dielectric constants, constant. So, you have C is equal to epsilon 0 into A by D. So, this is your general equation when you don't have any other dielectric. You only have free space or air. So, if you are going to place a dielectric here, then multiply this equation with the dielectric constant, say, K. So, the equation will be changed as C equal to K into epsilon 0 A by D. So, this is your new equation where K is the dielectric constant. So, K is the dielectric constant constant. This k value is approximately equal to 1 for air. So, that is why this k is not present in the equation when you are having air or free space in between the metal plates. And the value of k is 4.34 quarts. And similarly, for different, different other materials, you have various different values for k. The value for epsilon 0 which is the permittivity of free space is equal to that is epsilon 0 equal to 8.85 into 10 raised to 
minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square. So this is the equation for your epsilon 0 and k is the dielectric constant value which is different for different materials which are using in between the metal plates and A is the area and D is the distance of separation between the metal plates. Next we will see how the equivalent capacitance will change when the capacitors are connected in series and in parallel. So first we will see the series case that is here I am going to connect the capacitors as series. Let the capacitors be C1, C2, C3, etc. up to Cn. Then for the series case, the total capacitance will change as C total equal to 1 by 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus etc. up to 1 by Cn. So this will be the total or the equivalent capacitance when the capacitors are connected in series. When the capacitors are connected in parallel. That means for the parallel case, I'm going to connect the capacitors as parallel. Let this be C1, this be C2 and this be C3 up to Cn. So the total capacitance C total equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus etc up to Cn. So this is the total capacitance when the capacitors are connected in pair. Next we will see the different type of capacitors. So I have also included the images of the different capacitors which we are going to discuss now. So the first type of capacitor is ceramic capacitor. So this type of capacitors have very low capacitance value ranging from picofarad to up to microfarad 0.1 microfarad range. So these are typically having very low capacitance values. The capacitance ranges from picofarad to 0.1 microfarad. So it typically it is having a very low capacitance value uh, and also they are very small in size. So I have also included the image of a ceramic capacitor. So the ceramic capacitor from the name itself is clear that it is using ceramic as an insulator or the dielectric. So generally a capacitor is made by two metals separated by an insulator. So the insulator can be either air, a vacuum or uh, any type of dielectric which can be paper, mica, quartz, etc. So in a ceramic capacitor, it is using a ceramic material as a dielectric or an insulator. The next type of capacitor we are going to discuss is electrolytic capacitor. So this electrolytic capacitor are having capacitance value greater than that of ceramic capacitors that is greater than 1 microfarad. So this capacitor is made by using two thin aluminum foils and the electrolytic capacitor is made using two thin aluminum films out of which one is covered with a thin oxide coating and also in between the, the two aluminum films an electrolytic soap paper is kept and these two aluminum foils are wound together. So this forms a electrolytic capacitor. The next type of capacitor which we are going to discuss is tantalum capacitor. Here uh, it is similar to aluminum type that is the electrolytic capacitor but it is smaller in size because electrolytic capacitors are generally larger in size but tantalum capacitors are smaller in size and also in place of aluminum they use the metal tantalum. 
so that is why the name tellum capacitor so typically they can hold up to uh, they can be used up to maximum 35 volt so that is the tentalum capacitor the next type of capacitor is the plastic film capacitor so from the name itself it is clear that it is using a plastic insulator or a dielectric so uh, here two metal electrodes or metal films are separated by a plastic film and it forms a capacitor Next one is a silver mica capacitor. So uh, from the name itself, it's also clear. It is using silver as a metal and mica as a dry electric. So two silver metals is separated by a mica dielectric or insulator. So that is the silver mica capacitor. So uh, from a different type of capacitors, the name is actually forming from the metals and the dielectric or the insulators used in the capacitors. So these are the important type of capacitors which are being used so there are also various other type of capacitors but these are the uh, capacitors which i have included in this video and these are the important types so in this video we have discussed about the basics of capacitor basic capacitor structure its function its equation and how we got the basic capacitor equation and also capacitors when connected in the series and parallel form, how the capacitance varies or the, how, how the equivalent capacitance will be. And also we have discussed about some of the important types of capacitors. So I hope this video was useful and I hope you gained some knowledge from this video. If yes, please give it a thumbs up and also do share it with your friends and family. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.